All right. Here is another interesting entry that we have on distrohunt.org. If you have the need for speed, this arch-based distribution may be right up your alley. We are looking at Tux Hat Linux right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Today's entry is a little bit different from other distributions that I normally look at. This desktop is Flutzbox, and it's quite a bit different than the traditional desktop, as you will see in today's demonstration. Much like my distribution, Manjaro Cup of Linux Edition, this has a borderless window feature, and uh, this is standard with the distribution. The difference is, like for moving windows around the screen, uh, instead of pressing Alt and then left-clicking, you would use the super key. Let me give you an explanation of what it is you're getting with this and give you an idea of the workflow. Okay, if we look on the upper right corner of the screen, you're going to see that you have the time and date along with a network and a volume control. And then you're going to see all these little... Uh, bits of text here, these are all tabs where you can have different applications. Uh, there's a Steam tab, so if you uh, use the installer and installed Steam, you could run all your Steam games and apps in one tab. You have a media tab for running your multimedia applications. Uh, there's also one for running your text editors and that sort of thing. And I've actually got a bunch of stuff open in most of these tabs just because I thought it would be a fun idea to load the application and that sort of thing to give you a taste of what it is you're getting. To access the main menu you would press the Super M key and then this pulls up your menu editor and the menu is really easy to edit as well if for instance let's say we go into our because uh, I have it loaded in the file manager tab here uh, you'll see that Space FM is loaded up and you have this My uh, GTK menu. If you just right click on this, select Open That with Gini, the Gini tab opens up here, or the tab where I have uh, the text editors, and you get Gini and uh, Vim with this. And uh, you're going to see that you can actually add information in here and you can add custom things to your menu. It's very easily done with a script. And a lot of the things that you're going to be uh, doing to customize this will involve editing some scripts. Not too shabby, but it is super lightweight. And speaking of super lightweight, when I initially loaded this up into the system before running anything, I found that this only ran 160 megs of RAM, so it's really, really super light on memory. Of course, when you load a bunch of other applications and that sort of thing, that's where things will start adding up. So let's go ahead and just go on to our main page here. And uh, so we'll press uh, the Super M key to bring up our menu. You're going to see that you have a terminal. WeChat is in the main menu. Uh, which is an IRC client, which is run in a terminal. IRC is also included as well. And then TOP. These programs would open up that terminal for you. You have Space FM, Gparted, and File Roller. Uh, Firefox, YouTube, and Gmail. LX Music, SM Player, OpenShot, and the GIMP. Gini and Vim. LX Appearance which allows you to change the appearance of GTK items on your screen. And then, of course, Nitrogen, which powers the wallpaper. You have other menu options available to you in TuxHead as well. By right-clicking on your desktop, you can manage Fluxbox settings right here. And you also have quick access to most of the items uh, that are already in the main menu. If we open up the Media tab, you'll see that I have SM Player and open shot open. Next in our edit tab you're going to see I have Vim and Gini open and uh, I really like this text editor. It's been a long time since I've looked at Gini and this seems really nice to use. Uh, 
I haven't had a chance to really mess around with this to see if I could customize it as much as I have with uh, Sublime Text Editor. Otherwise, I would probably consider giving this a shot again. There is a VM tab, so if you want to run your virtual machines, you could load your applications to here. But hey, the sky's the limit. You can load anything you want to on these tabs. Okay, and under the File Manager, you'll see I have uh, Gparted and I have Space FM open. Now, something to keep in mind, LX Appearance will only change the appearance of GTK applications. But items that are that have a Qt backend, you would want to uh, you would want to uh, install a Qt configurator so or Qt configurator <laughs> so that you can change the appearance of other uh, applications that uh, LX Appearance doesn't handle. And of course, here in the terminal tab, you'll see I have a terminal open and I have top running. And of course, memory is running really high because I have so many applications open on this, just for the demonstration purposes, of course. And then in IRC here, uh, you'll see I have uh, both RC and WeChat open. And then of course, I decided to pop out the cup of Linux chat room now that we have that ability. So, I mean, you could have an area where you can you know, tile all of your screens for all the chat rooms you hang out in for support or if you're just socializing and that sort of thing. This is kind of cool. All right, and then under net, you're going to see that we have, uh, that, that I just have the Firefox web browser open in this. Uh, something I just can't get over with this distribution is this really rocks. It's fast. It's super lightweight. And in having some time to play around with Fluxbox, this looks like something I would actually use myself for a desktop. This is under rapid development, so the developer uh, is constantly putting up new releases, so you would definitely want to visit their website to keep up to date with all the changes. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be adding and removing features and that sort of thing. Uh, oftentimes he'll be fixing bugs, but this looks like a good achievement in its own right. The only gripe I really have about this distribution is, I mean, it's so lightweight and so fast, this would be perfect for a Pentium 2. Unfortunately, this only ships with a 64-bit edition. If he had a 32-bit version available, this would r run really, really well on your old hardware. But since it is 64-bit, you will need a processor that supports 64-bit. But if it's an older computer, it will run this really well and make a good workhorse out of that. As a reminder, everything that happens with Cup of Linux happens at cupoflinux.com. This is where you can interact with me personally. We have a vibrant community where we discuss technology in Linux. We have chat room, social networking, and voice chat on Mumble. Lots of great activities to keep you busy. We hope to see you all there. Peace out.